Hey everyone, Rolf and Sleeve Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Nicki Minaj album, Pink Friday 2. This is the new and fifth studio LP from a game-changing rapper who needs no introduction, Nicki Minaj. Over 10 years later, coming through with a sequel to her breakthrough debut album, Pink Friday, and I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Uh, right now, artistically, Nikki is not in the best place, and this record is pretty much the proof. Not only is this thing an unfocused mess, loaded with generic, soulless, sometimes unfinished songs, but after corralling together this ragtag bunch of tracks, some of which have been out for about a year, Nikki has the audacity to name it after her most classic and influential album, which only makes it even more apparent how little she has to offer on this LP. Now, I know some of the production on the original Pink Friday hasn't aged perfectly. Some of the synths and club-centric beats uh, feel very much stuck in 2010, but there's still a lot of influential and timeless stuff about that record, too. The album really had something to it between its futuristic, aspirational, super glitzy pop and rap hybrids. Not not to mention how expressive, wild, and over-the-top Nikki's delivery was at the time. Though Nikki certainly came into the game with her influences, I wouldn't say there was another album out that was exactly like it at the time, and there hasn't quite been another like it since, even despite the fact that there is now an album titled Pink Friday 2, which is really a sequel in name and in name only, because there's nothing ultra-poppy or cute or wild or cutting-edge about what this album has to offer. If anything, Nikki is playing it super safe on this LP, with a bunch of tracks that don't really dig that deeply into anything refreshing or new, uh, sometimes barely even personal. The closest she gets to that, I would say, is the intro track, Are You Gone Already, which is a touching moment lyrically where Nikki uh, stands between generations, her young son and her late father. And that familial bond would have been a great recurring theme throughout the rest of this record, considering how much Nikki's life has changed since the original Pink Friday. But that is not too much of a theme throughout the rest of this record, and even Nikki's attempt at engaging with it here feels a little cheapened by this very awkward beat in 6-8 that's soundtracked by this tick-tockified, chipmunked sample of Billie Eilish's When the Party's Over, which just makes the whole thing feel really trendy and impersonal. Now, after this track, we get into what this record is really about, filler, like Barbie Dangerous, which is one of many very short-of-breath attempts at bangers that don't really go anywhere all that exciting instrumentally or lyrically. But seriously, what is this track and what is the point of it? Nicki Minaj is not some meme rapper dropping a random freestyle masquerading as a full song so that it can go kind of viral on the clock app. She is a seasoned rapper who has written multiple verses and parts for many fantastic songs with strong hooks as well. She is really just punching under her weight on this one and many other tracks too, like on the even shorter Beep Beep or the bland and oversaturated Pink Birthday or on Bob. Bomb Bomb, where she is spinning one forgettable one-liner after another over these very quirky loops on a trap beat until the song just fades out because it has nowhere to go. It just feels like trap wallpaper or rap caviar ear candy meant to just kind of like fill the space. And frankly, given Nikki's vocal talent, her lyrical talent, she could do much better. And even when Nikki is kind of going the distance on some of these tracks, I wouldn't exactly call them barred up like Big Difference, for example, where I think the instrumental on this one does the bulk of the work. There's also Red Ruby the Sleaze, which is one of the few attempts on this record at uh, really kind of uh, spitting, at least in terms of like what Nikki's abilities are are now, but frankly the track is kind of staled out at this point considering it's been around since March, and all that time's done is make me feel weirder and weirder about that random Christopher Reeves bar, which is not just out there as a reference point, but also a desperate shot at Megan the Stallion that obviously she wants people to react to, like, ooh, I said the bar, and there's a ton of silence after it, you heard me say it, yeah, I said it, I'm not taking it back. The interpolation on this track, Never Leave You, uh, uh, -uh. 
is about the only thing catchy about it. And since the days of Pink Friday, Nikki has uh, loved a good interpolation here and there, which she does again here. Uh, maybe just about the only thing that makes this thing feel Pink Friday-esque, I suppose. Not that the interpolations on this thing are particularly great. Super Freaky Girl's interpolation of Rick James's Super Freak is maybe the catchiest example on the record, though I still wouldn't say it holds a candle to a modern classic like Anaconda. Deeper into the record, there is also a Pink Friday Girls, which brings to the table the chorus from Cyndi Lauper's Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Honestly, it, 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 it's a pretty um, embarrassing uh, inclusion. Really just feels slapped on there. Honestly, the best examples of Nikki incorporating other tunes into hers are the most unlikely ones. The track My Life brings on the lead chorus vocal uh, from the song Heart of Glass, and over some different chords, it actually takes on new life. And of course, I'm also liking the more personal and autobiographical angle of the lyrics here. It's a nice change of pace considering how general the vibe of the album is. There's also FTC which brings on vocals from Waka Flocka Flames' Fuck the Club Up, which uh, I love the instrumental on this one and the vibe, uh, even though Nikki spends a lot of this track kind of uh, throwing very bitter shots at her younger, more relevant, and more active competition these days, who she clearly has smoke for, but simultaneously, can she even live without them at this point? Because, I mean, one, they at least give her reason to have some fire in her belly. I mean, she certainly loaded some of these tracks up with bars that she knows people will take away as Meg disses. And two, frankly, if it wasn't for artists like Doja Cat, for example, uh, popularizing these very buttery, smooth, bland, spacey, ultra-feminine trap ballads, uh, would Nicki even have inspiration for at least a few of the tracks on this thing? Like Blessings, which is kind of a random attempt at a Christian rap song, a Christian trap song. And also the very lovey-dovey Nicki Hendrix featuring Future, who unintentionally sounds hilarious trying to sing in his lower register at the start of the song. There are a few Trinidadian grooves here and there that aren't too bad, though one of them does bring Drake to the table as if he's still stuck in his one dance era. There's kind of more life in the song Everybody featuring featuring Lil Uzi Vert, which brings uh, one of these Philly club, Jersey club grooves to the table, which uh, Uzi Vert is pretty much known for at this point. The track actually ends up being loaded with all these super chaotic booty house type samples flying in every direction. And it's hype as hell and maybe my favorite track here, even if it's not one of Nicki's most lyrical moments. There are also a few rap and pop fusions to be had, but they are very dull and pristine, kind of lacking in the bright colors and vibrance that we uh, no Pink Friday for, like on Last Time I Saw You, as well as Cowgirl, where I think Nikki couldn't possibly sound more tame. Meanwhile, R&B brings one of the tackiest and most cringe verses of her career to the table, and what's worse is uh, Lil Wayne on the song is pretty disappointing too, especially considering every crossover from Lil Wayne and Nikki at this point should be fireworks, should be like old friends getting back together, and yet this song is really any Anything but. Honestly, the best feature on this thing is uh, J. Cole's appearance on Let Me Calm Down, who fits pretty nicely into the song's themes of uh, how true love can be so stressful and life-changing. We have an okay closing track, which uh, brings a kind of cool, sugar-coated, dreamy reggae flip to the table. Nikki does get personal once again, but uh, she's not exactly going out with a bang here. And going on about memories on this track really only brings back memories of Nikki's uh, trackless being much stronger like 10 years ago or so. So overall, yeah, this record is pretty much a letdown. The instrumentals are generic, are uninteresting, are far from the most groundbreaking or uh, genre pushing or anything uh, in Nikki's catalog. Most of the songs here are underdeveloped or some of Nikki's most mediocre. And finally, Nikki's not really spitting on this record. She's just not. Nor is she bringing the vocal versatility that we know her for, too. There are a few more mature and personal moments here and there that kind of show her where she is today as opposed to, you know, where she was at one time over a decade ago, but uh, that is not the bulk of this album's vibe or story. In fact, much of the track list just feels like it's Nikki trying to uh, keep up with trends and pulling out tracks just to do it so that I guess she's not uh, seen as being inactive at this point. I'm feeling a strong three to a light four. 
on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Nicki Minaj, forever.